Folks, welcome to Best Stock Charts for the coming week. This is Bob Desmond over at The Contrarian Trader. And what we're going to talk about today is our week last week, our month last month. We're now proceeding into the new trading month, February. We had an outstanding January. Uh, we were long of the gold mining names. We were short of the market, and that short paid off. We, we did quite a bit of covered call selling. So if you're wondering, hey, you know, listen, Bob, you know, you are very long of the gold mining names, yet they had a very rough week last week and uh, for the month. They closed off the highs of the month, yet gold moved up higher. Uh, how is it that you did so well? What we've been doing while the gold miners have been in a trading range is selling very aggressively covered calls. And we've been lucky enough to set our uh, strikes up where they've been expiring out of the money. So we've been pocketing a, a lot of cash premium, bringing down our basis cost on the uh, we're long of NUGT. And we're doing very, very well uh, with that strategy. That's subject to change once we get a breakout on a weekly basis. I went over this with members yesterday on the week ahead commentary. If you're a member, it's in the members area. Go check it out. If you are not a member, please just go over to the website, sign up, 14-day free trial offer, and you can check out the week ahead commentary. Uh, you, if you go here to under performance, this is not up to date. We're fixing the... I know a lot of people go to this page, and it takes me off that it's not up to date. Um, this hasn't been updated since November. And the reason is, is that the way I we input the trades is currently under revamping. I, I won't go into it. This is not being updated unless I do it manually. It's not the ideal situation because I don't have the time to update it manually. So uh, it's not as if we haven't made a trade since um, November. Uh, we, have, uh, we haven't been overly trading, and you wouldn't see the covered call positions updated in here anyway because this is set up for uh, stocks only. So... That's got to change somehow, some way. I'll get that information out some point in time in the future when I figure it out. But as it stands right now, uh, we closed out the year of 2019. Uh, one account, a little over 40% on our trading account with uh, options writing on it. We did over 90% on that account in 2019. So very, very solid year, 2019. And we're looking for another solid year in uh, 2020. So please join us, please. And tonight, folks, before I get to the charts that we're looking at for the coming week, uh, join us 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, please, for Sunday night stock charts live. It's where we go over the futures action. How are we opening up? I think that tonight's going to be a fairly explosive night because of the spread of the coronavirus. We have a new case which resulted in death in the Philippines. So it's the first death outside of China. And this story is just becoming more and more bizarre and frankly, more and more nefarious when it comes down to the Chinese involvement and how this all originated. So I, I don't, I'm no expert on this, but um, it's concerning to say the least that this is spreading so fast. So uh, please join us tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, there's a link below. It's going to say uh, get a 15-minute alert of when we go live. And if you put your name in that email list, uh, you'll get an alert 15 minutes before we go live. And I'll have a link in there. It'll take you over to YouTube and the live stream. So please join us and we'll have a good time. We'll check out the futures action together, right? I'll get my, you'll get my comments on um, the price action and the news. And we'll go over uh, the Fed's balance sheet, which has again begun to ramp up yet again last week we'll talk about that as well let's get to the charts that we're watching for the coming week now i'm not going to go over the the gold mining trade i went over that with members that's a live trade uh, we are also long of silver we are short of the triple q's uh that trade began to pay off handsomely last week i think that's going up higher i think that we're going to have a rough beginning of the week in the stock market uh, but you know what? You need to keep one thing in mind. It's election year, and they will do anything to prevent this market from falling apart. So, you know, don't think that the Federal Reserve or the administration will not step in here 
and try to squeeze the shorts and try to salvage this market from falling apart. So expect that at any given time. That's why we didn't go leaning in to our short position aggressively once the markets began to fall apart. That's what I'm worried about, is the administration or the Fed working in conjunction with each other, the plunge protection team salvaging the market, forcing a short squeeze. And I just don't want to get overly short of the market just yet. I would rather wait for that event to happen and then for the markets to roll over and we'll lean into uh, the rollover of the markets to the short side. So members more to come there once we decide to uh, add to our short positions. Uh, and again, uh, with regards to the gold miners and silver, we have a plan laid out. I went over it yesterday on the week ahead commentary, which went out to members. Uh, when we want to add more to our gold mining trade, in all probability, what we'll be doing is selling puts, not buying puts, which is bearish, selling puts or selling premium. That's to generate income and to uh, reduce our basis cost if the shares are put to us. We're eyeballing the 33 to 33.50 strike prices to sell puts against. And if they're not put to us, so what? We pocket the cash flow. We already have a very large position. So we're in a good spot where uh, we can sell covered calls and we can also sell puts and try to get a discount, basically get a Groupon on your new shares that you're adding on to your portfolio. And that's a way to combat the uh, time decay on the leveraged ETF shares. So besides selling covered calls, that's another way that we are combating uh, the time decay so that we could stay in the leveraged ETF for a longer duration. Because technically they're really meant for trading, not necessarily for investment purposes. But if you use the options market, then you can make it work out for you. And that's what we're doing. And once we break out on a weekly basis on the NUGT, we're changing up entirely the way we uh, will trade options. We'll change up our strategy on covered calls because we want to take advantage on that breakout of a lot of upside appreciation on the share price. And we don't want to necessarily cap our upside potential. So members, again, more to come. And I discussed it on the weekend commentary. Let's get to the charts. All right, first one up we're going to go over is Arch Coal. And these are extreme oversold stocks. And the reason why we're trading extreme oversold stocks is because, A, they're optionable. And if I don't want to buy the shares, like in the case of Arch Coal, which is trading at a 50 handle, maybe I don't want to tie up that much capital with buying the shares. Maybe I want to sell puts. And try to get long of arch coal using the sale of put options that way it brings down my basis cost but to but to sell a put you need to know where you have historical support below if you don't know that then you're walking around like a blind man without a cane you must know that because you want your strike price to be at that support level or just below it so uh Right now, we'll go over the daily charts. I already went over the weekly charts and the intraday charts with members on the weekend commentary. Members, if you're watching this, go to the website, check out the full version of my analysis. This is just a cursory overview of why we like these charts. There'll be five symbols to go over. Those five symbols will be Arch, which I have up, uh, GLNG, uh, Blue Apron, Salt, and we'll go over the Baltic Dry Sea Index tonight on the... Sunday Night Futures Live show, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us, please, tonight. And we're going to go over Alcoa. So let's get to it. Uh, Arch Coal has RSI at 17 spot 1, 2. Very attractive, but it really just makes it onto our oversold screener. Uh, Stokes are flatlined here at 4 spot 6, 1. Can't get much lower than that. But your price action implies that we are going lower. So where is our historical support level? Check out the weekend commentary. I over, went over with members. We do have a level that we're interested in getting long of Arch at. Volume is still very, very high. So you have institutional distribution. Now is not the time to go jumping in just yet. I'm predicting that we're going to get lower lows, but a bottom is at least a short-term bottom. I mean, longer-term coal 
it's not an investment. I mean, the, especially if you get Bernie Sanders in office, uh, put a nail in that coffin. Uh, so this is certainly not an investment, but as a trade, uh, we do have some short interest in Arch Coal. Let me just make sure I'm right on that. I'm going by memory. Yeah, we have uh, a multi-day short squeeze opportunity here. So Arch Coal is very interesting as we proceed into the new trading week. Next up, we're looking at GLNG. Anything not gas related is getting absolutely annihilated. And we'll go over not gas tonight on Sunday Night Futures Live. And GLNG, let's bring up my annotated view. There we go. All right, so RSI on a daily basis. We have RSI at 18 spot 62. Again, just barely makes it onto our screener. A horrible price action. And Friday's price action implies that we will probably go lower. So I, as I go through this, I want you to please dismiss whatever you've read about RSI in technical analysis for dummies. Simply because an RSI goes down below the 30 mark does not mean that you go buying the shares. Take a look at what would have happened had you purchased Golar here on, let's call it the 24th. The first day we closed down below 30 on RSI. That would have been right here. On the 24th. So if you would have gotten it at the lows of the day at $11.26, you're sitting with a big fat loss right now. It's horrible. So please, don't go don't go by these rules of thumb. Uh, buy a stock when RSI goes down below 30 or buy a uh, sh short a stock when RSI goes down below or goes above 70. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's absolutely ridiculous. And you will go broke. So Golar... Uh, is oversold, but guess what? It's probably going to go more oversold. And I go over price targets with members on the week ahead commentary. Again, members, go to the website, check it out. Volume, uh, very high. So we have institutional distribution. So now is not the time, but it is on our watch list to get long of. And again, uh, it's optionable. How liquid those options are, we'll, we'll determine that when the markets open up this coming week, I don't, I don't necessarily know whether or not I'm going to trade options here because we're dealing with a stock that's in the single digits. I might as well just buy the common stock. Again, it all goes back down to liquidity when it comes down to options. The shares do trade over one and a half million shares per day, so the shares are liquid. Next chart up is going to be, let's go with salt. This is Scorpio Bulkers, Inc. We have RSI on a daily basis at 16 spot 1-0. Let's get my annotated view. So I think we're going lower here. We're going to have a crossover, a negative crossover over the 50-day, crossing down below the 200-day moving average. That's your death cross. Usually after you get that, that negative divergence, that crossover, you get a rally on the shares. So I think that the selling is coming to an end fairly soon. But looking at the volume here, we still have some institutional selling and we do have more downside. So we have a price target in mind. I went over with members on the weekend commentary of where we want to get long. So please join us, check it out, and get clued in of as to where we are looking to get long of SALT. And we'll be going over the Baltic Dry Sea Index tonight on Sunday Night Futures Live. So please join us. Again, enter your email address below if you watch this on YouTube or on the website. There's a link, and just enter your email address and uh, first name, I think it is, and uh, you'll get alerted 15 minutes before we go live. And we hate spam, too. You're not going to get spammed.
Let's go to what's our next chart? Alcoa. Alcoa is probably my favorite trade because we're very close to pulling the trigger here. If you take a look at RSI on a daily basis, we're at 15 spots, 7.9. Very attractive. It's an S&P 500 stock. It's rare you get S&P 500 stocks trading down with an RSI like this. But what's more important is the question of as to whether or not we are at historical support. If we don't know that, again, we're walking around like blind men without a cane. We do know what that support level is. We are very close to it. And on a daily basis, I do like the price action here. You're seeing bottoming tails, which implies that you do have some support below beginning to uh, pound their chest and begin to uh, accumulate a position. You had a good reversal bar here, and not necessarily a reversal bar, a, a rally off the lows of the day on the 30th. That was Thursday. On Friday, we did put in a new daily low. However, uh, you did see more buyers move in, bid it off the lows of the day, almost a doji store uh, formation, closer to a spinning top formation here. That's a sign of indecision. Once you get this type of price action, it implies that you're probably going to get a rally fairly soon. Is this going to be a sustainable rally, an investable rally? No, it's not. In all probability, we're rolling over. We have every reason to believe right now, when you take a look at the price of oil, energy, copper, uh, absent the precious metals, the, the commodities complex is falling apart. So we have every reason to believe, especially when you take a look at the Chicago PMI. We had five months in a row of contraction on the Chicago PMI. We're heading into recession here. So this is not a time to go buying what, what's perceived to be uh, stocks that are on sale. They're not. Stocks are very expensive. If this is, in fact, the beginning of the breakdown in the market, we're going a lot lower here. So all we're doing here is looking to scalp a profit. We have core positions built up in silver, core positions built up in the gold miners, and we are short the market. We will trade around those positions using swing trades of stocks that are at extreme oversold levels because I don't want to take on too much risk with these stocks that are just beginning to break down. All too many people are going to be out there trying to buy the dip. Folks, I already went over this with members. If you take a look at the the weekly chart of the S&P 500, the transports, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, they have all broken weekly support. So does that mean that they go straight down from here? No. But the process has begun where we are now beginning to uh, break down to break down below support levels. We'll probably rally back. The question is, do we take out prior highs or do we put in a lower high and then break down to new lower lows? This is where we're at right now. This is not a time to be buying the dips and betting that we're going to go back to all-time highs. We may for all we know. But all I want to look at are, are positions that are working for me now. And right now, all I see are the positions that are working. Gold. Granted, the gold miners did not do well last week. However, our covered call positions did outstanding. We also bought the dip when they sold the gold miners off. So we added more last week because... That position is not breaking down. It's consolidating and getting ready for a breakout. Because once the fear hits the market, and it's not going into the U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar got crushed last week. So where is money moving? It's moving into precious metals. And people aren't jumping on the gold, on the gold mining bandwagon yet. Take a look at the GDX. It was down last week, yet gold was breaking out. I mean, I don't know what people don't get here. They're still waiting for... for you know, pullbacks in Facebook and Amazon and whatnot. These trades are done. You want to buy Amazon here? Granted, a beautiful outside reversal bar last week on earnings, but we, we closed out the week above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. This is not something that you could buy right now. Take a look at it on a daily basis. And you're going to have the talking heads come on TV and what are they going to do? Oh, you need to buy Amazon. Their earnings this and the, the EBITDA that. Get out of here. Look at this chart. 
This is a hollow filled candlestick on a stock that traded above the third standard deviation Bollinger Band. This is a short all day long. Amazon is going down. Mark my words. Check this. Check this tape. This time next week, Amazon will have corrected from here. Am I am I saying that it's going to crash and go to zero? No, but we are going to come back down considerably lower from where we closed out the week last week in the next several trading days. And we don't even need to see a pullback in the S&P 500. Why? It's because this is unsustainable. I'm all about probabilities. This is unsustainable. I may even sell some calls against this position because it's interesting. <laughs> I just added Amazon to our watch list. So uh, this is a very dangerous market, folks. Did I go over? Oh, no, I didn't go over all my symbols that I wanted to go over. So please, don't go catching a falling knife. A lot of technical damage last week. Apron. Blue apron. This is a stock I don't think is going to be around in a year, especially if interest rates move up higher. So on a daily basis, we have RSI at 16 spot 76. I think we are going a lot lower here. We do not have... We do not have historical support below to help guide us and inform us of as to where we may have traders of like mind willing to step in and buy the shares. So I think that we are going lower. I think this RSI 16 spot 76 is just the beginning. I think that we're going to be in the single digits on Blue Apron probably this time next week. And I don't mean on price. I mean on RSI. So please, don't go chasing this stock. or buying the dip, uh, because we are going lower here. So, members more to come throughout the week as we decide when it's time to go buying Blue Apron. And Blue Apron, I have my notes here, does have a multi-day short squeeze potential as a catalyst to send the shares higher. It is optionable. So again, you know, it's trading down. I think it's going to be going a lot lower here in uh, the single digits. So is it wise to put on an options trade here? It all depends upon the liquidity. So for me to trade the options, they have to be very, very liquid. We'll see how they open up on Monday or else we'll just trade the common shares uh, if it doesn't make sense to trade the options. And if we decide to play the, the option game, uh, we'll sell puts probably but that's only if we go down to the single digits on RSI. And on that note, folks, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, please join us tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Enter your email address below, and you'll get an alert 15 minutes prior to us going live. There'll be a link to go right over to the screen live stream, and I will see you there. Everybody have a, a profitable trading week this week, and be well.